So we're at the Blonde 2.0 offices in Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm seeing a, a ton of different startups here uh, to get a sense of what the technology is that's co coming out of uh, Tel Aviv and uh, other places in Israel. One thing uh, that I'm noticing in my house is I'm getting a lot of digital devices. I have a Nest thermostat, I have Philips Hue lights to control my lights, I have a drop cam for watching security of my front door, and uh, we're getting more and more digital devices to control our, our home. And Sensibo is uh, a, another example of that. They're going to hook this into your air conditioner uh, at home, and it's going to uh, make your air conditioner more efficient and let you control it from a mobile phone. So who are you? So I'm Omer, co-founder and CEO of Sensibo, and I'm a devoted maker. Uh, I actually like to build stuff, uh, control air conditioner, open the door with uh, my, my phone, and I'm doing that for a lot of years. Uh, and I co-founded uh, Sensibo with my uh, uh, friend Ran, uh, who is the CTO of the company. Yeah. And this is really exciting technology that we build. Actually, first we build it for us because we like the idea and we want to install it in our homes and for the rest of the world, uh, which we believe will want the, this device. So, the, so you're going through the same thing that I am. I'm, I'm getting locks that are digital. Uh, I'm getting my Nest thermostat. I'm getting uh, lights that are digital and on and on, right? And this is going to control your air conditioner, right? Yes, exactly. So we looked for a solution to make the air conditioner more efficient and control it with a phone. And then we started thinking about the solution and uh, we didn't find anything. So we decided to build it. And then we discovered that we can make the air conditioner more efficient by 40% and that it can predict my behavior and learn my behavior. And then I, I could come home to a cool house. And if I leave the room and I forget the air conditioner on, uh, the device knows that I'm not there and we save energy. So this is pretty cool technology. So wh what kind of air conditioner does it work with? It's not going to be a Nest, which is going to compete with this ugly ther thermostat on the wall, right? Yeah, so uh, the Nest thermostat, actually thermostats, uh, most of the air conditioners in the world are not thermostat based. Most of the air conditioners are like air conditioner split units or window units or mobile units. And they are controlled by remote control. So this device works with any remote control air conditioner which is the majority. I think there are one billion air conditioners like this in the world existing, and they are still selling, and they are not smart. So we control that yeah. Yeah, with this device. It actually commands the air conditioner. You just put it on. It's tiny. It's beautiful. And it adds sensors, and it connects to the internet. Naturally, you get an app that you connect to the internet, and you can cr control it. And uh, using the, the algorithms and the sensory data we leverage from that, we can uh, make it more efficient. Uh, How much is this? Uh, this would retail for about uh, just uh, above one hundred uh, dollars, but uh, the technology allows us that for each additional uh, each additional air conditioner, it will be cheaper. Yeah. So if you have five air conditioners in your house, it will be cheaper than buying uh, another solution. So if I have an air conditioner in my window. Uh, what kind of air conditioner does it work with? Does it work with the old ones with a click switch on it? Yeah. So no, it only works with if you have a remote control or even if you lost your remote control, uh, it commands it like a remote control. It's like a universal remote control, uh, but a smart universal remote control uh, that adds sensors. Uh, it doesn't work if you have a very, very old air conditioner just with a, a button. Yeah. So because it's, it's not physical, it doesn't move anything. So what kind of sensors are in here? And it, I assume there's a motion sensor, so you know when So uh, no, it's not, there? there's no motion sensor. Ah, so it's not but like the we're using iBeacon technology. It's like BLE. So we know uh, who's in the room, not just if you're in the room. We know uh, that you're in the room. If you open the app on your room, uh, you'll see uh, the living room and not the bedroom, because I know that you live in the living room. And I know it's you and not your wife or your partner. Uh, so I can adjust the, the temperature and the humidity for you. And so this is, this is the sensing, it's iBeacon. 
Yeah. And the, the, now that that's interesting. I, iBeacon is only on iPhone. Does this work on Android and iPhone? Yeah, it, or? it works on Android. iBeacon works on Android as well. Yeah. Uh, our prototypes actually work with uh, Android phones and uh, iPhones. So okay. It's tested. So there's a beacon in here that the phone receives. Yeah, it, it, there's a beacon. The phone receives the beacon, and okay. then it knows uh, near which air conditioner and, and what room you are in. And this technology, when you have this, you can leverage it with our developer's kit and API. You can do other stuff like, ah, I know you're in the room and someone wants to write some uh, additional functionality and say, if you're in the room, maybe send messages to the TV, I don't know. Uh, in the Internet of Things, which is becoming more and more huge, uh, is actually devices are going to talk with each other. So yeah. this device will connect to other devices and it will talk to the TV, to the speakers, to the lights, you know, if you have a Philips U light, it will say you're in there. Yeah, yeah I, in my house I have a Revolve unit that uh, has nine radios that grabs control of all the digital devices and centralizes them into one app. Are you going to work with Revolve then to make that happen or are you going to try to do it uh, partnerships with more with, with all my well, digital at, at devices? Well, first we just want to get, uh, we're actually going to do a crowdfunding campaign in a week in Indiegogo. And uh, so at first we just want uh, to get this funded and to make this product happen. But our plan is to integrate with all of it, the Internet of Things and we'll start seeing uh, what people want from the backers of, uh, that we'll get from Indiegogo. And then we'll start building the integration. For example, Ift and Revolve and uh, other stuff like Ninja Blocks, Ninja Sphere, there, there are a lot of stuff. And of course, this is our plan. Yeah. When, is, when do you expect to ship this? I, and I know that uh, when you're a Kickstarter or Indiegogo company, it's, it's hard, hard to know yes. exactly when you're going to be able to make lots of qu quantity. You know, it's one thing to make a prototype. But it's yeah, so uh, we're actually in the middle of the development. So uh, uh, we started development more than a year ago, and now uh, uh, we're launching the campaign. Uh, and everything is almost ready, so we just have to produce uh, these in a mass quantity. So uh, we expect to ship uh, in six months. Okay. So it's like uh, the campaign and then six months later you'll get this. And By the end of 2014 then. Yeah. So that's cool. I want one. So thank you for, for uh, uh, doing this. It's a real interesting trend in the home that everything's going to be digitized and it's uh, good to see what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, where do we learn more about it and sign up for the Indiegogo campaign? So uh, we have the site sensible.com and the Indigo campaign, you will all hear about it, uh, it launches in a week and uh, you can sign up in, the, in our site for more updates. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.